Merry Christmas, and welcome to Virtual Christmas in a Barn. We're so delighted that you're with us uh, today for this wonderful celebration. I know it's not the same for any of us, but it is going to be the best we can offer you, and we're so excited that you've gathered with us. If you have gathered, wherever you are watching worship this morning, please know that all are welcome. And to help us best welcome you, I invite you to send me an email. Let me know that you were watching Christmas in a Barn with us again this year, uh, and let us know how we can best minister with you. We want to take a moment from Bethel Lutheran Church just to thank uh, our friends here at Cloverdale Barn, in particular Claire Boyd, and the wonderful work that she does here, but also the generosity of allowing us to use this space every year for this, which is our most popular worship service every year. So we're delighted you're with us. Merry Christmas, and let us begin now in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. On this day, Lord God, you have come near. On this day, Lord God, is a reminder to us of your willingness to walk in our shoes, your willingness to be among your people, that you seek us out wherever we are, and that even in the most humble of experiences, Lord God, you are most fully present. And so as we gather this day and hear this age-old story yet again, we are mindful of this promise that is for every day the promise of your inbreaking into our world to shape us anew and to remind us of your love and favor and grace. And it is in this confidence that we lift up all of our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, the babe who was born in a manger, who was risen from the dead, and who reigns forever. Amen.
my name is Rebecca Sigler, and the first reading is from Isaiah chapter 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you, as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden, and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this.
In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world shall be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them by this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Friends, grace to you and peace from God who is our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ, our Messiah. Amen. Nothing is the same this year. If I were to write a book about 2020, that's probably what I would entitle it. Nothing is the same this year. That works on a lot of different levels uh, for my life. Um, in January of this year, I had a heart attack. And then in March, my mother died. And then just recently, my father was diagnosed with cancer. Indeed. Nothing is the same this year for our family. But then on another level, outside of the personal, think of COVID-19. Nothing is the same. There was no NCAA tournament this past year. There was not as much baseball. There's not been no fans at any of the games. We have not been able to go to our favorite restaurants. We have not been able to enjoy movies in the movie theater. We have not been able to travel as we would want. Nothing is the same this year when we have watched so much struggle with people who have had have different opinions than we have and, and to watch an election that just kind of just was so maddening because it just was so divisive it says nothing is the same this year. Perhaps if, if you've gotten caught up in the struggles with COVID-19 and perhaps lost your job or if it's become real difficult to have to deal with being at home all the time and not being able to get out, that's caused some, some emotional struggle for you or, or some other realities of of relationship that if that, if that has not been a positive for you can say nothing has been the same this year I know in the church we have 
certainly echoed these words. Nothing is the same. We don't gather for worship. And even those churches that do, they have less people. You can't do all the things that you want to do. Indeed, here we are at Christmas in a barn, and it's just me right now in here. And not what usually happens when I'm sharing a message with 350 to 400 of my closest friends. Indeed, nothing is the same this year. Perhaps that's always true. You know, the world's always changing. There's always things happening. But this year just seems like it's been a little more broken. This year seems like it's been a little more stained with difficulty and pain. This year has, has seemed to be cracked more than normal. This year really has not been the same. And that really it really hurts when we, when we come to those moments like Christmas Eve. When those of you who love to come to the barn like me, we can't experience this the same way. It's, it's so tough. And it's so difficult knowing that nothing is the same this year. Well, one of the things that we have done intentionally with our worship today is that we really didn't change anything. We rarely change anything, but we, we really made it a conscious effort not to do that this year. And, and there's a reason for that, because we think that it can speak to this reality in our world that nothing is the same this year. If only by offering you a service that is exactly the same as it was last year with the same songs and the same promises and words that come from them. We, we've already sung, O Come All Ye Faithful, a song that, that reminds us that there is something that unites us beyond all the things in the world that would seek to put a claim upon us, that, that there is something that unites us that is most important, that is the uniting of understanding ourselves as God's people. Come, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Don't we want to feel some joy and some triumph in this year that has not been the same, where nothing has been the same, where we have felt beaten and broken and we have felt defeated? But these words, these same words that we hear every year have a special meaning because they are the same words. Because it is what we have come to expect. It is the promise of being the people of God. A people who gather together despite our differences to find unity. That there is a promise in the God who calls us together in His name. And that is something that remains. A promise that remains. We just sang not long ago, Silent Night. Silent night, holy night. Is there a more holy moment in any Christmas experience than singing that amazing song? Silent night, holy night. Thinking of, thinking of holding a candle and seeing a congregation filled worth of people. It's one of the highlights of my life. We're going to miss that. But, but those words, again, remind us of the God who comes near. That in the babe, God was born anew. And it reminds us that God is born anew, even in the midst of our brokenness all the time. God is born anew into us. In that tiny babe. In that promise of the God who comes near. We will sing later on, angels we have heard on high with its glory. In excelsis Deo, glory to God, glory to God. Singing those words remind us again that ours is the God who, who comes unexpectedly in our, into our world. Like the angels came to the shepherds, the shepherds had no clue who was coming. And in our world where nothing is the same this year, God comes in here, God comes to bring Joy and favor and blessing. God does that. 
We hear those words again this year. We sing that same song yet again because in the midst of the year where nothing is the same, we need to hear those words again of the God who comes to the least and the lost and the last, like the shepherds, to come to us when we feel like we are the least or the lost or the last, and comes to us and reminds us of God's favor. We will sing joy to the world. <laughs> I love it, the fourth verse. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove. What a beautiful story. He rules the world that we know in the midst of the brokenness, the chaos of this world, the chaos of everything that's happening, the hours. God has got this. God's got this. And God can hold us and hold this world and all of its peoples together. And if we can just see with God's eyes, we will see the unity that we share with them all, but that God's got this. That is something that we have to know in this year that does not, is not the same, where nothing's the same. And finally, we're seeing that great Negro spiritual, go tell it on the mountain. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Indeed, we go and share this message that we hear yet again tonight. We hear it yet again, the same message, the same scriptures, the same words. From Isaiah and Luke, we hear this message yet again, a message of God's amazing love and grace for us and for this world. And we have to hear that. You see, in the year that where nothing is the same. This story is the same. Thank goodness this story is the same. And it's the kind of story that reminds us that amidst the brokenness, amidst the, the stains, amidst the, uh, the, the, the fractured, chipped parts of our lives and our world, that there is God's love that can make it holy again. I love that we are called to go share that message. And so often sharing that message is less about what we say and what we do. And nobody did that as much in my life or any more. Nobody did it any more in my life than my mom, Barbara Young. And I have a little story to share with you that I think speaks to this message. Because my mom loved Christmas. She loved Christmas so much, she started playing Christmas music in July. And she would play it all the time. She loved it. She loved the season. She loved to decorate our house. She loved to decorate uh, uh, and make it just a, a place of joy. She loved, loved, loved Christmas. But she embodied that message every day of her life. And in particular, she did it with a special chalice that I have. Now, I don't know if you can see, but this chalice is chipped and broken. I bought it when I was in the Holy Land. You can see the stains in there. I bought it when I was in the Holy Land, and I didn't pack very well on my way back. And on my way back, it broke. But then my mom, out of love for her son, took all the pieces and put them back together. And you'll see that it's broken. You'll see that it's chipped, that it is incredibly imperfect. It's stained, and it does not look nearly like it did when I, I first bought it. As a matter of fact, friends, it's not dissimilar to 2020. <laughs> this is no longer... <laughs> No longer the same chalice it was, just like 2020, nothing has seemingly remained the same. But the blessing of this night, and the message that we continue to hear, the same message that we hear year after year on this night, is a message that reminds us that with God's love, as the love of a beloved mother, we can be put back together. 
2020 can be put back together. Your family and your struggles can be put back together. Your churches, your denominations, they can be put back together. All of these things can be put back together through the love and grace of God, which is happening now. And friends, it's not going to look the same. This does not look nearly as perfect as it did before. But let me tell you, it is more beautiful than ever. Because why? Because with all of the chips and with all of this little broken cuts, with all of the stains, just like our lives, just like our world, just like 2020, friends, it has been put back together by the love, by love. You are being put back together. Our world, our nation, our churches are being put back together by God. The same God who loves us always. Just as my mom put this back together for me. And in its imperfection, it is most beloved to me. God can put us back together. God will take the brokenness of 2020 where nothing is the same and he'll make it better because that's what God does that's why God was born into this world that's why we share the same message every year at this same time because it never gets old we always need to hear about the God who comes near and out of love puts us back together again brokenness, scars, chips, stains, and all. But we are made whole again in a new way. A way that is maybe even more beautiful than before. Yes, nothing this year has been the same. But thanks be to God, the God who remains the same always, has not left us. Indeed, God is carefully, out of love, putting us back together and allowing us to find new joy and new blessing in what the new creation of our world, of our families, of our churches, of our lives will one day be. In the name of him who was born to come near, to break into our world with a word of love and hope. In his name, amen.
this night, the eternal word of God is born in us. We pray for Christ's light of life to take flesh in the church, the creation, and all people of God. We bring to the manger our longing for the visible unity of the church of Jesus Christ, that undivided, it proclaimed the one whose birth brings good news of glad tidings to all people. We bring to the manger hope for the well-being of creation, that every valley be exalted and every rough place be made plain so that every living thing may flourish. We bring to the manger a vision of the reign of the Prince of Peace, that the nations, tribes, and peoples of this world will see and cherish in each other the very image of Christ whose scepter is mercy and whose judgment is love. We bring to the manger concern for those who have no place to lay their heads this night and for those who dwell in the shadow of loneliness, despair, illness, or death. We come begging that the child for whom there was no room in the end will open the doors of our hearts to the needs of our neighbors and ourselves. We bring to the manger all people who, like the Holy Family, gather with children in the splendor of this most holy night, that the gift of faith be lavished on another generation. We bring to the manger the hopes and dreams of all the years that with Mary and Joseph, angels and archangels, saints and martyrs, loved ones of every time and every place, our prayers and praises join in a common song uniting heaven and earth in a single peace. It is into your outstretched arms, O God, that we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in Jesus Christ, the light and life of the world. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same manner also he took the cup after supper. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray now together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now as I pass out Holy Communion to our, all of those who are gathered here, I invite you at home to go. And also, get bread and wine so that you can partake of communion with us. And now that once everyone has received the host, I invite you all the body of Christ given for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace and may Almighty God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen.